Let's look at the next problem, uh, 5.2 section exercise R1 and R2. This is exercise R1, is just simplifying the radical. So what you want to look for are perfect squares. So here's a list of some perfect squares. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared, again, this would be 3 times 3 is 9. 4 squared is 16. 5 squared is 25. 6 squared is 36. 7 squared is 49. 8 squared is 64. 9 squared 81, 10 squared is 100, 11 squared is 121, 12 squared is 144. So I'm just multiplying the numbers by themselves. So when you have the square root of 20, you want to look for a perfect square within 20. And the way you do that is you look for factors of 20. So I would have 4 times 5, uh, 4 times 5 makes 20 versus 2 times 10. I mean 2 times 10 does make a 20, but 2 and a 10 is not a perfect square over here. So I choose the 4 times the 5 because I know the 4 is a perfect square. So when you have a perfect square, you take out the number that's squared. So if I have the perfect square 4, I take out just the 2 part because uh, that's what the square root does. It takes out the uh, perfect square, just the single single number part. So 4, I take out the 2, so now this 4 is completely gone. The 2 is on the outside of the radical, so the answer becomes 2 square root of 5. You can always check your work by, uh, if you put that 2 back in, for instance, if you put it in, it has to, you have to square it to get it back inside. So when you square the 2, you get a 4. 4 times 5 is 20. All right, let's look at another one. Square root of 27, again looking for perfect squares. I would do 9 times 3. Uh, 9 is a perfect square, so from 9, again up here, I take the 3 out, and again, whatever you take out goes on the outside of the radical, so that would be 3, uh, 3 comes out, and I still have this 3 in here, so that'd be 3 square root of 3. Uh, 162, this is a little harder. If you can't find the perfect squares, you can just go through and divide 162 by 4 by 9 by 16 until you get the highest one that it divides by. Well, 162 is uh, 81 times 2. 81 is a perfect square of 9. Uh, so the 9 comes out on the outside of the radical, so the answer would be 9 square root of 2. Square root of 75. Uh, what if I had a number out here already? Let's say I had the number 6 outside. So I still have to work with the square root of 75 inside. So um, Again, the 6 is on the outside. Let's change this answer here. So I take the uh, square root of uh, 25 times 3. 25 is a perfect square. So I take the 5 out. I'm left with the root 3. But because I have this 6 out here, I would have to multiply these two things together. So I would have an answer of 30 root 3. Okay, now let's go to the next one, 5.2 section R2. This is rationalizing the denominator. Uh, rationalizing means you basically cannot leave a square root in the denominator. So you're trying to make a perfect square root. So in order to make a perfect square root, you just basically multiply by whatever is in the denominator under the root symbol. So for instance, for this one here, 11 over the square root of 3. Square root of 3 is in the denominator. So I multiply numerator and denominator by the square root of 3. Again, if I break this down mathematically, square root of 3 divided by square root of 3 is 1. I'm not multiplying by anything other than 1. It just allows me to simplify this. Uh, so square root of 3 times square root of 3. Uh, again, when you're multiplying radicals, you multiply the two numbers underneath. So root 3, root 3 is root 9. And again, root 9 is a perfect square, which is a 3. So if there are, aren't any other numbers in here, uh, basically, you get rid of the radical and you just reduce it down to whatever the square root of the perfect square is, which is 3. And then in the numerator, uh, 11 times root 3, uh, 11 is not under a radical, so it stays on the outside of the radical sign, and then you just have root 3. So the sim even though this looks a little bit more complicated, uh, the simplified answer is 11 square root of 3 over 3. But what, and more importantly, we've rationalized the denominator because in math, you never leave an answer that has a root sign in the denominator. You always have to rationalize it. All right, let's try another one. 15 over the over root 5. So this time I multiply top and bottom by root 5, root 5. Again, this is just a 1. 
So looking at the denominator, 5 times 5 is 25, which is a perfect square. And that is a 5. Again, I get rid of the root sign. All right, let's look at the numerator. 15 is on the outside, stays on the outside, 15 root 5. So I end up having 15 root 5 over 5. But what's different about this one is the 15 and 5 actually simplify. So I can divide this out. 15 divided by 5, I get a 3. I lose my fraction, so all I have left is 3 root 5 for an answer. This one here, 4 over root 6. Again, this does not simplify even though you have a 4 and a 6. Uh, it doesn't simplify because the 4 is not under a root. Uh, so you can't like just take a number out of a root and simplify it. So first I rationalize root 6 root 6. So 6 times 6 is 36. And now I have root 6, perfect square, root 36. I get a 6. And I take the 4. 4 stays on the outside, 4 root 6. So now I can simplify this. I have 4, 6 over here. I can divide this 4 and this 6 by 2. Again, I'm not touching what's under the radical, just the numbers on the outside. So that makes a 2 thirds or 2 root 6 over 3. This 3 and 6 do not simplify, so don't try to get in there. Uh, the only way you could simplify that is if it was uh, already under a radical.